Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Upstate International and our Ex Sensations Experiences uh, cooking series. Today, we are very excited to have a special guest chef all the way from New Delhi, India, joining us this morning. Um, we're so glad that we could work out for her to connect across these vast time differences and geographical distances to bring you this experience. Um, this morning's event also is part of our greater mission, which is to engage in the international cultures that fill our region with uh, opportunities to discover something new, to become a part of a broader mindset, and really bring the world home to South Carolina. Um, our guest chef today, Anshul, um, Anshul Bala, is from New Delhi, as I said, and she came into a love of cooking through her travels worldwide. She tried new cuisines everywhere she went and brought those recipes back home. Um, and with each, each uh, new experience, she said she learned a sense of happiness and achievement and wanted to share that with other people. Te Sutra focuses on cooking experiences and culture sharing for both tourists and corporate groups really with a mission of bonding over these shared cooking experiences. They've had more than 2,000 guests at this point in their four and a half years uh, providing this service uh, to tourists and to uh, corporate groups. So I want to welcome Anshul today and joining us to take your questions and provide them to our chef and also share her own experiences with us is Miss Sally Gillespie, our own chef from Plate 108 here in Greer, South Carolina. Uh, Sally has a, a wonderful um, experience and um, education in the cooking world. She started out as being hired with Serena Bass Catering in New York City, moved into production of events, and from there found that she really loved uh, this cooking um, and event making for the public. She moved into the Culinary Institute of America and began to focus on, um, sorry, <laughs> began to further her knowledge and understanding of food and the food industry. Um, today, Sally now works for Chef One, for Plate 108. Um, she has also been, a, oh, has won several James Beard Awards um, and worked for Michelin star restaurants from Napa Valley to Vermont. That's quite a large range of experience. Sally, thank you for joining us so much as well. Um, if you have questions along the way, please type them into our chat function. Um, Sally will then provide them to Anshul and she will also provide information on things like where you can find local ingredients if you need substitutions, um, changes in measurement and that type of thing. So I'm going to turn the event over to Sally. Sally and Anshul, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. All right, Anshul, take okay. it away. I'll answer any questions that anyone Okay, Hi. great. Uh, hi, everyone. Namaste all the way from India to everyone. And I'm so looking forward to cooking for you guys today. And I hope you guys will be cooking this recipe back at home after this. Um, I really don't know. I mean, of course, I know that Indian food is very popular around the world. Everyone loves to eat Indian food. But I don't know if how many of you have ever tried to cook it. So today, um, whatever recipes I'll be doing are all kind of home style, you know, uh, really simple. I mean, it's the, it's a myth that you need about 20 ingredients to make an Indian dish. Um, today, we got to keep it really simple because even if you've not tried it before, I would want you guys to go back and actually try your hand on making these recipes. And before cooking, uh, so, so how I like to learn about any new cuisine is that I always want to understand the science behind it. So, you know, if I read a recipe and it says these are the ingredients, I want to also understand that what are those ingredients and why actually are we putting. So I always taste them separately and stuff. So 
Indian cooking is all about balancing the spices, right? So I would like to begin with talking about the spices we use and today whatever we are using and what particular spice gives what kind of a flavor or aroma because once you understand that any recipe you would it will be much easier for you to actually make it okay so let me show you my secret spice box so if you see this so this is our spice box this is uh, this is very common in every indian household mostly in india so this is how we usually keep our spices you know rather than putting in jars it just comes in handy to keep it like that because when we cook it's all about you know putting things together and tasting and adjusting your flavors so if you have it in them together it makes your life easy and it's more handy rather than every time you have to open and close the jars so i'll just quickly take you through these are the primary main spices which we use mostly in most of our cooking so these are cumin seeds so if you see that's the only spice which is in the whole form in my box otherwise i have turmeric the turmeric is for the natural yellow color you would be hearing a lot about turmeric being anti inflammatory and really healthy especially with the covid situation with the corona as well everyone says take turmeric tablet or take fresh turmeric because it's very healthy it increases your immunity so it's a natural color and lot of uh, benefits out of it so that's why in uh, in indian cooking turmeric is a very predominant uh, spice uh cumin seeds gives a actually a kind of a nutty flavor to your food so that is what we use it for we have coriander powder so my coriander powder is a little more greenish in color than probably what you guys would have if you have at home because it's much fresher so coriander is actually cilantro so these are the seeds and then we make it into a powder so this is to give that herby base to your food so you know this is that herby fresh text uh, flavor then uh, let me do this one first this is garam masala so garam actually literally means hot so this is a blend of different spices it has black pepper cumin cinnamon nutmeg clove dry ginger bay leaf lots of different whole spices and because it's a mix it can be that different brands or different restaurants or at home when we make it ourselves it can taste and smell a little different and this gives that smoky flavor to your food because of all the whole spices then we have the red chili powder or paprika so in india we actually grow different chilies in different parts the ones which grow up in the north so if you've heard about kashmir region so kashmir is the up north state we have the chilies which grow up in the north are more red in color they are much more bright but they're not very hot so that is why we use kashmiri chili wherever we don't want to make it too hot but we want that nice color out of it and in case you want to uh, have the spicy one then of course in different regions we have more chilies the ones which grow in the south or in the west they are much more darker in color i'll just show you as a comparison you would know so if you see this is kashmiri which is red in color but it's not too hot as compared to these these are more maroonish like dark color these are from the south so they are actually much more hotter <clears throat> then one more which i want to tell you about <clears throat> this is not what a lot of people know about this is actually dry mango powder so what we do with the mango uh, when the mango is raw the green mango we peel it slice it off and then sun dry it so green mango the unripe mango has a more sour flavor to it because it's unripe obviously it is more tangy so when you sun dry it 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 looks like this you know and in india we have beautiful sunlight so we usually do it in the sun but you can do it in a, a oven as well or in a you know like a hot uh, plate or something you know but it has to be on a low roasting so once it gets dehydrated we make it into a powder so that dry mango powder is actually used to get that sour flavor into your food now another very important thing about indian cooking um everyone loves to eat indian food most of the people would uh, pick up a takeaway of indian meal and everyone likes it but uh, very i don't think so a lot of people associate indian food to be healthy because the kind of food you get in the restaurants is always with so much of butter and cream and spicy and there's always like a layer of oil floating on top um and it's more more i mean the colors are too uh, too uh, bright you know when the colors are so bright definitely there has been artificial color added to it because if you use natural ingredients you would never get that bright color so uh, how we actually cook at home in india and how we eat our food every day 
we don't use any artificial colors or flavors in our food it's all very healthy uh, you know kind of a cooking and eating so uh, you know i would not use uh, vinegar or lemon juice usually in my food i would use that mango powder to get the tanginess i would use uh, turmeric to get that yellow color so that's that's one difference home food is always about how do you want to keep it healthy and nutritious for your family and like a balanced meal so today whatever we i'm going to show you is all home style recipes it is the way i would cook for my family and i don't feel guilty after eating feeding them even like butter chicken which has usually a lot of butter when you eat out but at home it doesn't have the way i make it i actually don't use a lot of butter or cream so it's a healthy version of butter chicken okay so a uh, few more spices i want to tell you about rather just two more there is one which is cumin powder if you notice my cumin powder is much darker in color because this is actually the roasted cumin powder what i do is i roast the cumin seeds and then we make it into a powder so this gives that more of a nutty flavor to our food and one more we have fenugreek leaf so fenugreek is actually one of the winter greens we have uh so these are quite bitter in its flavor but because of the bitterness it's also an excellent source of blood purification in our body so you know people with diabetes and uh, you know a lot of people uh, who have blood pressure and diabetes and all they eat more of fenugreek in winter because it keeps a check on their blood sugar levels so whenever you're making a sauce or a gravy which is like a curry which is more on the sweeter or the sour side just put a little bit of these leaves and the bitterness balances out very beautifully okay so um, these are with about all the basic spices i wanted to tell you about now today we are going to be cooking uh, i'm going to be cooking uh, two main dishes for you so one is the main dish which is the butter chicken um, it can also be so this particular recipe we make the sauce the gravy separately and we add the protein we cook the protein and add it separately So instead of chicken, you can even do it with paneer. If you want to do a vegan version, you can use tofu. You can uh, do prawns. You can do fish. So the sauce is separate and the protein is separate. You can actually make anything you want. And uh, second, we are going to do a very quick cumin potato, which is called jeera aloo in India. I also call it the bachelor potato. It's just it's a funny story. I'll tell you when we get onto it. So we're going to do that. And for a bread, we are going to do a garlic naan. uh even the garlic naan i mean it's the flavor garlic you can do either garlic or you can do butter or you can do any other flavor as well it is just that i'll teach you how to do the basic one and then you can you know customize according to your own wish okay sally is there any question before i start cooking i did not see any questions as of yet okay okay perfect so guys please feel free to ask anything you can write in the uh, chat box and then sally will uh, shoot it to me and Oh, uh, there's no question as a bad question ever, so don't worry about anything. Okay, so let's. Uh, so two things beforehand, I would like to do. One, I would like to marinate. Um, so today, what I am doing is instead of chicken, I'm actually using paneer. So I'm going to do butter paneer, but instead of uh, paneer, the same way you treat your chicken as well. So first, I want to marinate that, and with how any marination works, the longer you marinate, the better it is going to be. so i will first uh, marinate and keep it in the refrigerator till i get on to the rest of the cooking sauce okay now so in the marinations if you guys have heard about tandoori stuff so tandoori means indian barbecue so most of the indian barbecue uh, you know the marination base is always yogurt so we are going to take yogurt as a base i'm going to show you here So that's the bowl in which i will be marinating that is homemade yogurt you can use any any yogurt from the market but please use natural yogurt i don't want you guys to use strawberry yogurt in butter chicken so so let's take natural yogurt so just about you know one and a half to two tablespoons give it a nice mix we don't want any lumps now in this uh, in india uh, a life becomes easy we get this ginger and garlic paste which is ready you know in the market so it's actually a blended paste of ginger and garlic either you can get something like that if you don't have this you can even make a fresh one yourself so just take about 3 to cloves of garlic a uh, half an inch piece of ginger 
and uh, just blend it together or you can even grate it or mince it that also works so we're going to put a little bit of ginger and garlic paste you guys will be getting the exact recipe later this is how we cook in india we don't level spoons or measure anything as such so we just you know cook everything by uh, an approximation because by the look and feel and the taste of it so now in this i will be also adding my spices so turmeric half a teaspoon the kashmiri chili or you can use paprika if you don't have this i am also going to put cumin powder no thanks okay and of course we need to season it so i'm going to add salt as well there goes in my garam masala okay so i will just repeat the spices so we've taken yogurt we've taken ginger and garlic paste turmeric chili powder garam masala cumin powder and salt so that is all the spices give it all a nice mix so this is the marination if you guys i don't know if you have had tried before uh, chicken tikka or tandoori chicken or paneer tikka this is a similar marination to that also so now in case you guys want to have a barbecue party at home so this is the base like the yogurt and ginger and garlic is the base you can actually do a little bit less or more of different spices and do different flavors and different proteins so you can do um, you can put extra garam masala in one you can probably put little extra turmeric in one you can um, so if you want to do it on the grill uh, i would recommend add some oil also into your marination since we will be cooking cooking it on the pan directly i would add some oil before cooking it so then we don't need to put any oil in the marination but if you're doing it on a barbecue please add some oil also in your marination now in this one you can put some coriander like uh, you can blend some coriander and mint fresh leaves and then add so that's called haryali tikka you know the marination you can so now with the same kind of a base you can please taste the spices as i told you in the beginning so you can put a little bit yes or less or more of everything and change the flavors accordingly okay so <coughs> now we are going to add the paneer so that is my paneer so paneer is actually a uh, cottage cheese so i just cut it into small cubes so you can use tofu you can use uh, chicken instead of this so just give it a very nice mix you want to marinate it really well that's how it looks like now so uh, ideally if you want to cook it for dinner please marinate it in the morning because the longer you keep it the better it is going to be you can even uh, marinate it overnight and cook the next day so now i'm going to keep this in the refrigerator and in the meanwhile we got to so that is the first process done because i wanted to show you how to marinate that's why i've done it now uh if i usually want to cook it for dinner or next day i would marinate it the day before especially with meats because the meat takes much more flavor if you marinate it beforehand okay now that's one of the first processes i wanted to do now i also want to first uh, make the dough for the naan bread because with that also uh the 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 uh, you know for you keep it for a little while and then that's how uh, it is going to get more smoother and elastic and then we got to work on it now with the naan bread <coughs> sorry sorry anshal um how many people will this recipe serve so the recipe i had shared it would be i just for two people so you can adjust the quantities according to you know if you cook it for more or less you can increase or decrease the quantity right okay thank you yeah so uh, so now what i'll do is i'll get on to the making the dough of the naan bread now for this um, naan bread is usually you know in the restaurant it's very it's a very popular bread in india but it's not something usually we make at home every day and eat because it is not one of the healthiest bread to have as compared to the other one which we have which is the roti or chapati naan bread one uh, technically you need a tandoor which is a clay oven to make it um, of course today i don't have a clay oven at home so we're not going to do it on the clay oven i'm going to do it on the pan 
like one of my aunts taught me how to do it but uh, <coughs> in the restaurants it's always done in the clay oven also naan bread is made with the uh, all purpose flour which is uh, you know which is a uh, further process from the wheat flour so our everyday flat bread we usually use wheat flour because it's healthier it has more roughage and more fiber but uh, naan bread it's, it's more like a party thing i mean special occasions we make naan bread so uh, sometimes people also add egg in the dough in the naan bread um, in india almost 40% of our population is a vegetarian so uh, in my house like i have a big family i i live with my uh, so my husband's family home my grandmother in law my mother in law my father in law me my husband my sister in law my brother in law they uh, two year old kid we all stay together so in our house we have three vegetarians and the rest of us we do eat meat so you know i don't put any egg in my naan bread rather i put a little bit of yogurt instead because that also kind of activates so uh, you know your uh, flour so i actually replace the egg with yogurt you can try it with egg also if you want but with yogurt also it, it's pretty good it's not bad okay so that's my all purpose flour so you can take about uh, for one cup of flour now in this we are going to first put the dry ingredients <coughs> sorry so we're going to put salt like a big pinch of salt we are going to put some baking powder okay now first things first you need to mix up all the dry ingredients especially the baking powder you don't want the baking powder to have like lumps and not get incorporated into the flour so once you mix it all so indian indian cooking indian eating please don't feel shy to get your hands dirty because that's how the authentically it is always done okay now in this we will also put a pinch of salt or sugar sorry we'll put a pinch of sugar now i am going to put my yogurt which is my replacement of egg so i'm putting like about one one and a half tablespoon and add a little bit of oil i'll give it a nice mix now uh, in the recipe i have shared it's a garlic naan now again uh, in india not everyone is a big fan of raw garlic so like in my house my grandmother in law doesn't like to eat garlic so what i usually do is i make the dough plain i don't put any garlic inside and uh, when we roll out the naan bread we chop a lot of garlic and keep and whoever wants the garlic in it we put it on top and roll it and whoever wants some sesame or some onion seeds or some coriander or mint you can actually do the different flavors then uh if you love garlic and if everyone in your family likes garlic you can even add the garlic inside so what i'm doing is probably half of it i'm putting it inside and half i leave to put it on top so now once it starts getting together into a crumble now we have to add water <coughs> sorry now with the water don't add too much water all together you have to go little by little so because uh, this is something you know i can't really tell you how much water you would need because uh, i mean this is something totally by by feel of it you will know what you want in the end is like a play dough consistency so if you see the bowl gets clean it starts coming together into a ball so sometimes i've seen people making a dough and they just keep on using their fingers that doesn't work that well what you have to do is use your entire hand like your palm and squeeze it like that you can even use the back of your uh, you know your palm like your knuckles and just work on it so this is how you actually activating the gluten into the bread into the flour <coughs> sorry about that okay so it you know what you what you need is it should be like a play dough consistency so uh, you can uh, see garlic uh, minced garlic or are you using a garlic paste no it's minced garlic i've just chopped it really finely okay thank you now what can So if you see just make it into a nice and clean ball 
everything from your fingers and everything can also come out easily so it it becomes like a play do uh, uh, you know uh, consistency so this is a great activity with your kids as well you know you can make them make uh, do the do and they love it to get their hands dirty and so this is usually we you know a lot of families want to do it together as well so if you see this is the consistency and elastic now it's becoming so now that's it you just make it into a ball put it in the same bowl now what you have to do is just take couple of drops of oil of, of oil you can even use a brush or what i do is i just put it on my fingers and you want to brush it on top this is this is why i am doing because i don't want it to form a crust on top that's the reason on top <clears throat> yeah can this be made with gluten free flour have you ever tried that uh i tried roti with gluten free flour that works uh, naan bread i haven't but you can give it a try uh with gluten free flour it just that gluten free uh, will be less elastic because obviously it, it's missing out on the gluten so it's not that stretchy so rolling out will it will be a little more dry probably you can put a little bit extra oil and uh, yogurt and try it it should be able to work and what kind of oil is best to use for um covering the dough any kind of oil you can use vegetable oil or olive oil whatever that because that's just a little bit that's just you know up to a couple of uh, drops so after we cook then i'm going to use butter or ghee to brush it that is important but the brushing uh, i mean the for the dough any kind of oil works of course non flavored is better okay and then um the recipe it calls for 7 to 8 cloves <laughs> of garlic and they want to know if that's correct hmm it's correct so we just put a little bit inside the rest of it we are going to put it when we roll out so it fits for people who love garlic so we put a lot of garlic on top so you can adjust it if you don't like that much garlic absolutely absolutely you can make it plain naan as well totally as i said in the beginning you can do that as well and uh, also uh, in india actually our garlic cloves are much smaller and my recipe is because that's why i say 7 to 8 but if you have really big garlic pods you guys can uh, you know use uh, less as well okay. that's right so probably in america we would probably use maybe half yeah yeah <laughs> okay so now and then what you do is just uh, once you've brushed it with oil just cover it up and i'm going to keep it on the side because uh, then uh, i want to wait for about at least 30 minutes before i want to roll it out okay so we done with the marination we are done with the uh, making the dough now let's get on to uh, making our sauce for the butter chicken now this recipe uh, so usually butter chicken is quite a favorite with everyone everyone loves to order a butter chicken when they are out eating in the restaurant but trust me i worked in restaurants uh, one portion of butter chicken has 100 grams of butter and 50 ml of cream that's why it's so good but uh, you don't want to consume that kind of calories every day so it was my husband's favorite uh, dish you know when i got married and he used to just love having butter chicken and i later realized that i can't give him this kind of food you know every second day because he's definitely going to have a heart attack in a month by eating so much of butter and cream so i came up with this recipe which is actually it doesn't use uh, much of butter and cream also i just put it in the end just to finish it off which is also optional so it is a much healthier uh, way of cooking butter chicken uh, it's it's actually a really really simple recipe it doesn't use 20 ingredients it doesn't takes you hours to make you can make it in 20 minutes and it's really something which has a flavor but not uh, you don't feel guilty after eating it okay so let's start with that so now butter chicken sauce uh, is usually if you eat it's more of a tomato cream sauce so you know that's how butter chicken got actually invented there are lots of different stories about butter chicken how it was invented who invented it you know we've had india has been ruled by so many different dynasties and empires that whoever came in took a lot from us but left a little bit behind of their own culture and their own uh, heritage so with butter chicken also you know someone says like there's a restaurant in delhi which claims that accidentally the chef uh, put the cooked chicken in tomato and tomato sauce and then he added some cream and that's how the butter chicken was invented i I've, i've heard and read few stories where it says it, it was they in, invented way back in uh, you know you know 17th century and stuff 
then uh, chicken tikka masala which a lot of people love is actually technically not an indian dish it's a british dish it is when the british uh, people were ruling india they took our spices and invented that in their country so lots of different stories around it so today we are going to do my style of butter chicken which is the easier and healthier version so in this recipe uh, the amount of tomatoes i am going to be using is almost three times the amount of onion so the ratio so as i said this recipe is for two people you can multiply the recipe just make sure because also it can be different that sometimes your onion is really really big and your tomatoes are small so then don't go by the number it should be uh, you know in weight you can take so if you're using 100 grams of onion please use 300 grams of tomato because this particular sauce needs to have that more of the tomato tangy flavor to it okay now let's get on to the cooking part you guys can all see now i'm going to switch on the flame now first things first i will add oil now in indian cooking the rule we have always put oil first followed by any whole spices if you are using if you are using some cinnamon or cardamom or cumin seeds or any whole spices they should be put into the pan first because you want them to crackle and release the flavor into the oil that's a very important thing um you know and then we put our onion or tomato and later on we going to add the powdered spices why we follow this sequence because if you put the powdered spices in the beginning they'll get burnt and if you put the whole spices later on they won't take out that much flavor so that is why we always follow the sequence of oil first whole spices second onion and tomato third and powdered spices fourth okay should the pan be hot before you put the oil in or you start it cold so i start it cold but then i wait for the oil to get hot or either you make your pan hot and then add the oil then it won't take very long to uh, get hot Uh, the uh, idea is that the oil should be nice and hot before you add your spices okay now i'm first putting the cumin seeds as i said whole spices first so cumin seed is in the whole form now sometimes if you don't have cumin seeds at home but instead you have powder uh, don't worry you don't need to rush to uh, a store to get cumin seeds you can use the powder as well but instead of putting it in the beginning then add it after your onion and tomatoes that's the only tip okay now if you all can see the cumin is sizzling really nicely <coughs> now this is how you know the nuttiness of the cumin will come into the oil so that's why it's an important step so once the cumin starts crackling i am putting my onion and tomato that's my tomato and that's my onion So as I said, it's a really simple recipe. I just basically dump everything together into the pan, cover it, and forget about it for ten to fifteen minutes, and then I blend it and finish it off. Now in this, I want to add some cashew. So cashews, I do like one handful, like a fist of cashew. So cashew is the secret to give that creaminess without actually putting a lot of cream into it. Okay. now we put an uh, oil cumin seeds onion tomato cashew we are going to put that ginger and garlic paste again now in this recipe if you don't have ginger and garlic so uh, you can even put it like you can chop it and add even the onion and tomato if you uh, notice they are not very finely chopped because we are going to be cooking all this first for about 10 15 minutes and then we going to blend it all together into a smooth paste so that's why you don't have to worry about chopping it finely or mincing it or anything even the onion and tomatoes you can put it like uh, onion uh, sorry your ginger and garlic you can just chop it and add also because it will eventually be blended all together so uh, so only seven eight ingredients so oil cumin seeds onion tomato ginger garlic and cashew nuts that's uh, eight and just one more ingredient i want to put one spice which is the coriander powder so my magical box comes out So we're gonna put a big tablespoon of coriander powder. So now let's just give it all a nice mix. Now it is so you. Sometimes a lot of Indian recipes it's called 
thought that you have to brown the onions you have to caramelize the onions or you have to sweat the onions now in this particular recipe i don't want the onions or tomatoes to caramelize or turn brown i just want them to be cooked till they are nice and soft and mushy so i would make sure that they don't get brown rather if you feel it sticking to the pan you can even add some water to make sure that you know it's not uh, getting burnt or stuck at the bottom so what i'm going to do is now i can just probably cover it up and uh once you put everything in or uh, don't cook on a very uh high heat a medium heat or a low heat is good okay so that could take about 10 12 minutes uh it's basically one pot dish you just throw everything together and you wait till they get nice and soft and then we are going to blend it into a smooth paste uh remember we were talked about the fenugreek leaves in the beginning the ones which have the bitter flavor so when we make the paste we got to use the fenugreek leaves actually to make it uh, to balance out the the sourness the acidity of the tomatoes and the sweetness of the onions later okay so let's uh, wait till this is getting cooked in the meanwhile uh, i think we can uh, utilize our time and talk about the next recipe which is cumin potatoes so cumin uh, is actually jeera in hindi in india we call it jeera and potato is aloo so this that's why this recipe is jeera aloo or cumin potato now the funny thing is i also call it the bachelor potato uh, in india uh, not a lot of men know how to cook you know um it's a still a taboo that cooking is supposed to be done by the lady of the house and men are supposed to go out and work and bring the money home so you know the the sad part the unfortunate part is that a lot of men are never uh, exposed to any cooking they don't know much how to cook i have a lot of friends when they had when they were studying or when they had to go out to work and they were away from their families that's when they had to learn how to cook so jeera aloo is a favorite with all of them because that's something they all know how to do it because it's the most easiest thing to do you can make it in 5 minutes uh, provided you have boiled potatoes now with the boiled potatoes again in india what we do is um, we take the potatoes and we boil them with the skin once you boil it with the skin uh let me show you how well they are boiled so you see they are nice and soft like it's going in really easily so the potatoes so uh, once they're nice and soft we just uh cool them down and boil potatoes with the skin you can actually store it in your refrigerator for a long time like you can store it for about 5 to 7 days they don't go bad now if you have boiled potatoes in your fridge you've come back from work you're really tired you don't want to make something which takes a lot of time what you can do is you can just quickly peel up the potato and chop it and make this in 2 minutes you can uh, mash the potato and make cutlets out of it you can make a stuffing for a paratha which is a flat bread so so you know you can use uh, uh, you know you can boil potato saves on lot of life you know that way okay uh what type of potato are you using uh okay so another thing in india uh, the funny thing is we only have two varieties of potatoes in india we don't have any variety i've been to the us and the first time i went to the supermarket and uh, i got a bag of potatoes and when i came back to my apartment and i i made a potato curry and it was so chalky it was so bad that uh, now that i called my mom and like mom you know what i mean something is wrong the potato curry was really bad and then you know my mom's like maybe those particular potatoes are not meant for a curry you know just check the label again and then when i read the label it was true that that particular potato was not meant to be cooked in a curry it was more like for a mash and stuff so then i realized it of course then i went back and i noticed there were so many varieties of potatoes so i actually won't be able to tell you which exactly would you need but uh, don't take any potatoes which are too starchy you can probably use the potatoes which are good for french fries or you know like chips those potatoes would work for this recipe as well okay so yeah. more like a waxy potato like a red bliss i think would probably work yeah maybe yeah for us life is really simple we go to the vegetable guy and one variety of potato one variety of tomato and one variety of onions even onions we only have red onions we don't have white brown yellow any kinds of onions in india for us life is really simple okay so i was checking that i don't want to burn my onion and tomato now if you have the boiled potatoes with the skin you can simply 
peel it with your fingers itself you don't need a knife or anything now what i've done is i've already peeled and chopped one and kept here so that's a boiled potato already if you see it's really soft so it's boiled and peeled and chopped now let's in the meanwhile check on our onion and tomato if you see my onion and tomato they're really soft and that's what we want so this is what you would notice after 10 15 minutes if you start smashing with your spoon it's so soft that it, it become like you know a mash kind so that's that's good so that's it now i'm going to take it off the heat we don't want to cook it for too long or anything i will blend this up now anything too hot should not be put in a home blender like if you understand you have a thermomix or uh, then it works but otherwise if you're using a regular blender don't put uh, while it's too hot uh, please uh, use uh, uh, you know uh, you can uh, cool it down and then blend it up always remember this i've learned it the hard way i burnt myself as a kid so now i know that you should never do that so i'm just going to keep it on the side and then i will blend it later okay okay so uh that is on the side now uh you come back from work you really really super tired you don't want to make something which takes very long so what i am going to uh, so now come home peel your uh, take your boiled potato out of the refrigerator peel it and chop it up you have that ready you can actually time it if you guys want this is actually going to be ready in 2 minutes so once the pan gets nice and hot now you can either use oil or butter uh, or ghee so ghee is actually clarified butter so if you see this is how our ghee looks like so this is actually white butter if you cook the white butter and you clarify there's a liquid layer which floats on top that's what your ghee is so you can use ghee or oil i'm putting some oil in this one so since this is cumin potato so of course there's going to be a lot of cumin in this So again, my spice box comes in handy. Cumin seed. Now wait till they crackle. Important step. So you see here that sizzling sound. Ah, uh, you can put some grated ginger if you like. so once the cumin starts crackling now i'm just reducing down the heat because the moment i'll add the powdered spices i don't want it to get burnt so now quickly turmeric coriander chili mango powder so in case you don't have mango powder you can use your lemon juice a little later salt and we gonna put cumin powder give it just a nice mix you just want to cook the spices for a few seconds you don't want to overcook it or anything if you are fond of uh, spices like chili that's the green chili which i have chopped it really finely you can add a little bit of that if you're not a uh, big fan of heat or uh, you can avoid the green chili so just give it a nice mix just about 30 seconds you want to cook the potatoes in the spices you just want your spices to get coated really well with all the uh, you want your potatoes to get like all the spices coat the potatoes really well that's important so you see such a beautiful color we've got and we have some coriander leaf which i am going to use it for my garnish so i'm just taking a big pinch and putting it on top and tada time up so if you see uh, this is actually the easiest thing you can do it takes you just 2 minutes now because the potatoes are already boiled now if you see they're just so soft like you can just smash them up like that so that's why if you have boiled potatoes saves on a lot of time and uh, effort for you guys to uh, make this recipe okay now this is ready so what i want to do is probably uh 
first thing done so at least i can put it in the bowl so this particular uh, uh, pan is called kadhai in india in hindi so kadhai is like a wok with two handles so that's what we call it here okay this is it that is my jeera aloo which i also call the bachelor potatoes and that is the reason why i call it the bachelor potatoes okay we can now take some extra coriander leaves and put it on top now in case you don't have the mango powder you can put some lemon juice in the end or like before serving as well this is also great as a bar snack like if you're having chilled beer or any drink you can make this and put some extra lemon juice and with a toothpick you know you can just uh, munch on them like that as well okay sally any questions um not as of right now okay perfect so now this my onion and tomatoes have cooled down i want to quickly blend it into a paste so you guys have to just give me 30 seconds i'll just quickly put this in the blender i'm going off screen Okay, guys. If there, if anyone has any questions, still, uh, I'm just blending that up. Please feel free to ask. Okay, no questions. So that's cool. So what I'm going to do is uh, now uh, the onion and tomatoes is going to be our sauce. Now, as I said, the the protein, the chicken or your paneer. Uh, in the restaurants, what they do is like this is actually one of the master uh, recipes, the master sauce. Uh, it is uh, uh, okay. So this is uh, you know uh, what they do it in the restaurants. They make the sauce in a big batch in the morning because they know that almost every uh, table would order a butter chicken or a butter paneer. So they make the uh, sauce in a big batch. Now, if an order comes in for chick uh, butter chicken, they just quickly cook the chicken and then put it in the sauce and serve it. If it's paneer, uh, sometimes they marinate it and cook it. Sometimes they just cut the cubes of paneer like that and put it in the sauce and serve it. So you can actually, in case you have a family mixed with vegetarians and uh, uh, you know uh, people eating meat, you can actually uh, do the same. Make the sauce in a big batch and then put the different proteins in it. Okay. So now what I want to do is. We have a couple questions. Um, one being, so, is mango powder available in Greenville? Um, you probably can't answer this, but I would say if you look for an Indian market, um, you would be able to find it, or um, you can always go online and order it. Yeah. So it might also be known as amchur. So am means actually powder, and uh, am means mango, and chur means powder. So it's actually literally mango powder. uh sometimes in an indian grocery store it can be labeled as am chur as well uh it's a a m am c h either u r or double o r am chur okay and then also how does tofu absorb flavor so tofu would also absorb flavor in the way like when you marinate it and then we going to be grilling it on the pan so that is why uh, that's how you're going to get the flavor okay any other questions or should we start yeah um i think that's it okay cool so now what i've done is i am going to show you the paste you can see it is really nice and a smooth uh, paste so, and if you see it looks really creamy i mean it looks as if there is a lot of cream into it but there is no cream it's just so cashew nuts a little bit of cashew nuts and cooking of the onion and tomatoes which give that creamy yeah. now what i'm going to do is in the same pan uh, that's why i call it the one pot dish because i don't want to wash too many utensils especially in the lockdown these days everyone's cooking too much and there's too much uh, work at home so i want to use the same pan because it anyways has all the flavor Now in this one, I'm going to use ghee. So if you don't have ghee, you can even use butter. So I'm putting 
about one one and a half tablespoons of ghee. Get it a little nice and hot. This is my marinated paneer from before. So in case you're a vegan, instead of uh, ghee or butter, you can again put some oil itself. I want to get all that marination as well because the spices and all the flavors are there also. So now uh, you can do this on the grill in the barbecue. You can do it in the oven as well. I am doing it on the same pan. So paneer, of course, doesn't take very long to cook. But if you're using chicken, it will take about uh, four to five minutes to cook. Depending on how small or how big your chicken pieces are, you can grill it in the oven as well. In the oven, I do it on about 180 degrees for at least uh, 25 to 30 minutes. You can always poke the chicken to check if it is done. So, Panina, I just want to cook for about two, three minutes. And in the meanwhile, I'll start cleaning up here because after this, I want to make the bread. So the marination starts because of the yogurt. Once you start cooking, it starts uh, releasing the extra moisture. Don't worry about it because that is going to be a part of our gravy. So that has good flavors. Okay, so now I feel my paneer is uh, done. I don't want to overcook my paneer, especially with paneer because paneer is really soft because of the moisture in it. So if you cook it for too long, it gets too dry and uh, you know it's just very rubbery, which you don't want. So that's why paneer don't cook for too long. Now comes in my sauce. So now do you also have to put some water into the sauce. So what I do is, I rather than putting directly into the pan. That's the best way to clean your jars as well. Put it in the uh, blender. Close it up. Give it a nice shake. And in goes your sauce. So this way you've added the water and you've got all everything out from your blender as well. So if you notice the sauce, the the sauce is not very thick. Like unlike the the food you used to eating in the restaurants, uh, Indian curries at home we like it much runny because that's how you dip your breads in it or you want to mix it with your rice and have that's important. So now is the time for those uh, fenugreek leaves. So this one in Hindi is called kasturi methi. Now, um, Sally, if you want me to spell it, you can write it. It's K A S T U R I, Kasturi, M E T H I, Methi. Now, in case, now, now, how to put this is because they're dried leaves, put it on your palm and rub it. And you know, you're kind of crushing it before you're adding it in. So, this will actually elevate the flavor better out of your Kasturi Methi. Could you spell that one more time, please? Yeah, it's K A S T U R I. And the second word is M E T H I, Methi. It's fenugreek leaf, dried fenugreek leaf. Now, in case you cannot find Kasturi Methi, uh, an alternate so you can do is I would once, uh, I had gone to Europe for a cooking event and I was in Prague, uh, you know, making a meal for Indian, uh, like Indian food for people there. And they could not find any uh, uh, fenugreek leaves. So uh, in their pantry, they had some thyme. So I put a little bit of thyme instead. And it did work. So it wasn't that bad. So in case you don't find uh, kasturi methi, I, you can actually use uh, either thyme or a little bit of oregano dried. Just make sure that whatever you're putting in, Rub it between your palms because you want them to get a little more crushed. You don't want to bite into those uh, fenugreek uh, leaves. Yeah. So now I want to 
taste my sauce. Oh, I haven't put any salt, so I am yet to add my seasoning. So I'm going to add some salt. And also I'm going to add some sugar. So sugar, why? Because the, the tomatoes in summers in India are always more tangy than the ones we get in winter. So butter chicken sauce should be a little on the sweeter note. So that is why we uh, add uh, some sugar to balance it out. You can put some honey as well. Usually butter chicken is not supposed to be spicy, like not chili. So that's why we not put any chili powder. In case you want a little bit of that heat, you can add that as well. Now, I want to just tell you a quick story about salt. Now in India, um, we have lots of superstitions. So I like, you know, like how we live with generations in the same house. I have my grandmother-in-law living with us. So we have lots of superstitions. So a superstition in the kitchen, which we believe, salt, we never pass salt to each, uh, to anyone by hand. Now, for example, I'm cooking and my mom is also cooking next to me and I want salt and I tell her, please pass me salt. Uh, she would never like, you know, if this is, if this is sauce, this is my mom, she would never give it to me like this. How it's passed on is you keep it on the uh, bench and then you pick it up. Like you never pass it with your hand because if you do that, it's, it's a bad omen. You end up fighting with that person. So that's why salt, we never pass it like that. Also, uh, with salt, uh, as a kid, I, I've been very fond of cooking since I was a small child. I, uh, you know, kitchen always used to intrigue me. Um, but I was never confident about adding salt. So I used to do everything else. And then I used to call my mom, mom, please put the salt. So, you know, I mean, she used to really laugh at me that I used to cook for like 20 people, 30 people all by myself. But salt, I would never add on my own. So then uh, my grandmom once told me that there's a trick. Uh, whenever you're adding salt and you're not sure about how much to add, smell, smell it. Like I'll just show you what I do is just smell it and then put it in. Uh, it's it's a way that you will never over salt your dish ever. It worked with till now with me, so maybe you guys can go back and try that if you want. Or probably it just works in India. I don't know. You can always write back and tell that it worked or it did not. Okay, so now my sauce is uh, done. So I'm just shutting it off. If you see, it's thickened up a little bit, but I don't want it to get too dry also because I want that sauce because I want to dip my naan bread and have. If you see, it's nice and creamy. You can put some cream in the end if you want. Uh, otherwise, also, it is pretty creamy. Like, personally, I don't like the extra cream because I, I'm, I'm more calorie conscious. But if you if I have a party or something, then I put some cream in the end. So it is totally your choice how you want to do this. So now I'm going to keep this on the side. Or rather, I can put this in the bowl. Okay, so this is also done. Any questions, Sally? Um, I don't see any right now. Okay, perfect. Let me just quickly wash my hands. Give me 10 seconds and I'll be back. Okay, now I wanted to wash my hands because we are going to get on to the bread. So that's my dough which has been resting till now. I think there's too much of light so you guys are seeing a lot of reflection. So, so I can show it to you like this. That's the dough. Uh, so it's, it's become even more soft and elastic by now. Now for making uh, the naan bread, you have, of course you can do it in the oven if you have the clay oven, which is the tandoor. If you don't have that, you can roll it out and put it in the oven and bake them. 
uh otherwise if you're in a hurry this is the fastest and the easiest way to do it i do it directly on the pan uh, the only thing you need is that you need to have a flat pan so either take a flat pan or you can use a frying pan it just needs to have a flat bottom that's very important <coughs> now out of the door i don't want to do really big uh, naan what i'm doing is um uh, i'm taking a small dough like an egg shape Okay, now I'm just working on it a little more. You just want to make sure it's nice and soft. Make it into a ball. Now, because there was oil inside, you don't need to, uh, uh, more oil or flour to dust uh, to roll it out. If you feel it sticking, you can put some extra flour to roll it out. Now, with a rolling pin, I'm just rolling it out. Uh, now, uh, if you don't have a rolling pin, I have tried this; it has worked. you can use a wine bottle so you can use a wine bottle to roll out your naan bread or any flat bread once on a trip i had booked an airbnb and i did that and it did work so a naan bread is not a round it's it's a little oval so i had put some garlic inside but i still i love garlic so i'm going to put some extra garlic if you like sesame you can put some sesame seeds I have some onion seeds with me, which are Nigella seeds, you know. So I'm gonna just add them as well. They are also super healthy and nice. I might put some coriander as well. So just put everything, but you have to make sure you press it really well because otherwise, when you cook, it will all fall off. So once you put everything and press it with your hands, just roll it out. gently with the rolling pin just to make sure everything has been incorporated in it now i am teaching you the like a trick how to do it on the pan without any oil or butter okay so pick up your naan bread now that's the front side put it back side like that on your palm regular water room temperature water what i'm doing is I am spreading it on the back side, like a ten, like a liberal amount. This is gonna be like your adhesive. This is how it's gonna stick to your pan. Now, just to check if my pan's nice and hot. So you hear that sizzle? That means your pan is nice and hot. What I'm gonna do is now just throw it like that and press it. So this way, your uh, naan bread gets stuck to the pan. I am doing this on an induction. If you guys have gas back at home, at this point, what you can do is you can invert your pan and cook it directly, like on heat, like that. So you get this nice charred color. If you're doing it on an electric or an induction, like I am, just cover it up and make sure your pan is really nice and hot. So this way, you actually kind of creating a. a Fake tandoor, you know, it's gonna get really hot inside. Uh, it's gonna bubble away and still get that charness from the bottom. So I am just gonna do that. So you can actually do any kind of flavor naan. So this is uh, garlic and coriander. We put. I put some nigella seeds. You can put uh, mint. You can put cheese. So if you want to put cheese, when you roll it out a little bit. put them inside and make again a ball and then roll it out because then the cheese will be like a stuffed inside one you can do that even with the the cumin potatoes i've made so usually i when i make i make it in a bigger quantity i just put it inside two slices of bread and make a sandwich like a toasted sandwich you can put it inside your naan and make a stuffed uh, naan as well so you can do anything you want okay let me show it to you guys Did you see? It will start bubbling up a little bit. Yeah. Now I want to flip it. Yeah. Do you see that nice charness? This is what I wanted.
So the yogurt has made it softer and air pockets. Baking powder, of course, gives it a nice rise. I'm just pressing it for that extra char. If you have uh, gas, like you can put it on direct gas as well and quickly uh, flip it. So now as you see, that nice charness, I guess. So that's about it. My non bread's ready. I just want to crisp up the sides as well. See, this is a tongue for this. I am used to burning my fingers and making breads with my hands for 20 years, but I don't want you, want you guys to burn up your fingers. So, non bread's done. So, that's my non bread. That's my garlic naan. And of course, I like it butter garlic. So I'm going to take ghee and put a nice liberal amount on it and spread it. That's how you're going to get a nice, you know. That's my garlic, butter garlic naan. The rest of the food is also ready. I would just like to quickly now put everything together to show it to you guys. Now for the uh, butter paneer, instead of adding the cream in the end, I am just putting it a little bit for the garnish. This is how I do it for my husband. He thinks there's a lot of cream inside, but there's not, not much inside. It's only on the top to show it to him. Okay. And of course, we love coriander. So we're going to put lots of coriander also on top. Now, breads are something which we always make fresh when we want to eat them. So you can even keep the dough and have it later. I don't think so this would fit, but you guys can. Okay, guys, so that is the, the Indian meal we've made. It's just about an hour in which we've done everything from scratch, if you see. So that is my butter paneer, that's my jeera alu, and that is my butter and garlic naan. I hope you guys are salivating through the screen because that's the whole idea that you guys should feel so tempted that you guys would want to go and make this again for your family. Uh, any questions, Ali, I can take them now. Guys, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, we're done with the cooking, but uh, the floor is open for any questions you guys have. Anything about Indian cooking or Indian food or Indian culture, I'll try and answer whatever I know. I have a question. Um, in America, we are often served um, curries or um, butter chicken with rice. Is that mm -hmm. in India as well, or is that something we've kind of created in America? Um, I mean, we do have rice as well. It's not that we don't have rice. Uh, so in India, you know, the demographics change uh, according to different regions. In the north, uh, people are used to eating more breads than rice. But if you travel towards the south, uh, they, their staple is more into rice. Even in the, in the eastern side, Bengal and on the hills and mountains, people are more of rice eaters. Like I, I personally, I like eating rice more than bread. So sometimes I eat both or I eat one. So you can have either one or both of them as well. It's not, there's nothing wrong about it. Yeah. And how did um, Indian cooking develop to use so many spices? Sorry, sorry. Um, how did uh, Indian cooking uh, develop by using so many different spices? So as I said, you know, with India, you know, because uh, we were always so rich in resources, we produced so many spices. So how any kind of cuisine uh, originates or, you know, like uh, uh, what, 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 what was the basics of uh, anything is whatever is grown locally to you, people use that to cook you know, in, in their everyday life. So that is the reason. Um, 
So in India, if you travel, it's a big country. You know, if you travel every hundred kilometers. the way people dress the way people eat the way people uh, you know the could be everything changes so if the spices also you know uh, there are few places where so like uh, in in i'm in i'm from delhi in north uh, it was uh, north uh, we don't put a lot of red chilies in our food if you go towards western side their food is very very predominantly a lot of red chilies like i personally get a lot of acidity when i have red chilies so that's how the different regions the spices which grow that's how it has all been very very uh, you know it is kind of uh, gone into their own way of cooking so we have a lot of regional food in india which tastes very different but the chicken and naan is one of the most popular dishes when it comes to indian food that's why i chose it to teach you guys today but uh, there is so much more in india to explore so every little spice you know like if you in this one you put a little bit of extra garam masala it will be different than if you put a little bit more or less of cumin powder so it's all about the balance it's all about the keeping the spices levels different and i even if my i mean the same recipe i make it my friends makes it uh, my aunt makes it my mom makes it it will be different because the way we handle the spice everyone has a different uh, you know hand so that's why Yeah. Um, another question was: Would you suggest buying a spice tin with a collection of spices, or to buy them individually? Uh, so uh, a spice box usually. Uh, so in India, we actually go to the local markets to get everything. So in the market, how it works is one kind of sh one shop sells only one kind of product. So if a shop is selling a steel box or utensils, it is just a utensil shop. You won't get the spices. so you buy the spice box separately and you go to a grocery store where you get your spices and your um, other uh, you know food staples that's where you get your spices and you come back home and you fill up if you getting a spice box with the spices in it it is more of a touristy thing for you it is not how any local would shop so i would not recommend get a spice box with the spices in it because the spices would be much stale and stuff so get your box make your own spice box uh you can probably put uh, things which you going to be using more you don't need to necessarily put only these seven spices so like that and how can you be sure that the spices are fresh uh so smell definitely taste um uh, in my house uh, something you know what we've been doing for generations we always buy our spices as whole i don't buy powders from the market so i have a spice grinder like you can use a coffee grinder or any blender Now, for example, for red chili, I get the red chilies whole, which I shown to you, and then I make it into a powder at home. For coriander, get coriander seeds and just blend it. It would just take you ten minutes extra to do it yourself, but that way you ensure it is much more fresher. So, I ideally I would do that. Otherwise, uh, you can always smell, and uh, you would know that if uh, they are fresh or not. Yeah. Um, another question was, where is the tandoori style from? Tandoori style is more on the Mughal side, I would say. I mean, because uh, they used to do a lot of marinations and barbecues. You know, especially it, I think originated during the war times when people used to travel. Uh, they used to keep on walking for days and months, so they used to hunt and uh, you know just do a simple marination, rub off spices, and then do a bonfire and tandoori. You know, they used to start roasting it on that. You know, I think it should have been from there. Yeah. But there's so many different stories about Indian food and the origins, you know. Like now, Indian food tomato is such a prominent ingredient for us. But I was reading about the other day that tomatoes was not actually originally a part of Indian cooking ever. So yeah. All right. Let me see if there are any other questions. Okay. I don't think we have any more questions for you, so I just want to thank you. Um, oops, sorry for the video. Uh, thank you so much, um, Anshal, for agreeing to cook for us today. Um, we also want to thank Alka, and I don't know if I'm, I don't want to butcher this last name, but Alka Babsar for introducing us to you, um, for introducing us uh, to Taste Jura. Um, Alka is the owner of RN Journeys. It's a Greenville-based company. um they do small group travel giving you a hands-on experience um so we thank you for that introduction to upstate international um 
Upstate International also wants to thank everyone for joining us today and we hope you will join us again on August 18th at 12 o'clock p.m. when Ambassador Robert Blake begins our three-part series on the supply chain. Um, if you want more information, you can go to the uh, website, which is upstateinternational.org.org, and you can register for an event or um, find out more information on upcoming events. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you, Anjal. This is Alka. Hi, Alka. How are you? All good, all good. Thank you Thank for you. introducing me. I had a great time. Yeah, you